Welcome to CORB, part of the Data Modeling Series by MarkLogic University On Demand. In this video, you will learn the basics of CORB, the steps to implement to use CORB, and see a demonstration of using CORB. This tutorial is targeted at developers who have a working knowledge of MarkLogic. Additional details about CORB can be found in the CORB2 repository on GitHub. So what is CORB? CORB stands for Content Reprocessing in Bulk. It is a Java-based tool that is, as its name implies, designed for bulk reprocessing of content that is already stored in MarkLogic. So there are two main use cases for CORB. One is to modify existing content. Let's say you have customer information already loaded into MarkLogic. The decision is made to implement an envelope solution. So how can you take all of your existing content and shift it to the envelope motif? Well, CORB can help you with this. CORB will allow us to select all of the customer datas and modify them to wrap them in an envelope. The second main use case is to generate reports. The same mechanisms that allow CORB to step through many documents for modification can be leveraged to generate a report. These reports can be CSV files or some other simple text file with headers. You could also generate XML or JSON files, which could be used with a PDF generator or to drive other processes. So how does CORB do this? Under the hood, CORB has five configurable stages that allow for it to do batch processing. Each can be configured with XQuery and MarkLogic or by writing a custom Java plugin. The first stage is init. It isn't generally implemented, but could be used to run any necessary initialization services. Init can run either a custom Java task or, or AND, execute an XQuery module. The URI stage is used to generate a list of URIs for documents that should be processed. The selector should return as quickly and efficiently as possible without filtering. At times, this may necessitate casting a wider net for documents than those that actually need to be touched, that are needed for a report or for a transformation. However, once the list has been generated, the documents it contains can then be worked on concurrently by as many threads as the server is capable. At that stage, it is no longer necessary to avoid opening the document, and work can be performed at will. The URI stage can create the list either from an input file or by running an XQuery module. The pre-batch stage runs just before the process stage and is generally used to create the headers when generating a report. If you are performing a transformation, this stage would generally be skipped. Pre-batch can run either a custom Java task and or an XQuery module. The main workhorse of the CORB tool is the process stage. At this stage, the documents that were listed in the URI stage are iterated over one at a time for processing. This processing could be modifying the documents or generating content for a report. The process step can be multi-threaded if desired and will run an XQuery module. The final stage is the post-batch. From here you can perform any cleanup that may be required or close out a report with footers. This is accomplished through the use of a custom Java task or an XQuery module. As an example, we're going to use a simple transformation to implement an envelope system. For more details on the benefits of doing so, please see our self-paced course, Data Envelopes. So to implement our simplified envelope, we will place the existing content into an envelope source element and copy the customer ID out into a generic element called ID. As you can see here, 
we're dealing with customer data. So we've got a customer doc that we're starting with that has generic details in it. After our transformation is done, we want to see that original customer doc in the source element for our envelope, and we have bubbled up, we have copied that ID out into the generic ID element in the envelope. Now for our example, we have gone ahead and we are putting our customer data away into the customer collections. This knowledge is useful when writing the code for the URI stage and is very helpful when it comes to making sure that we are filtering that nest down in an efficient way. For our example, we're going to walk through two stages with code. So we're going to have our URI's code and we're going to have our process code. Here we are starting off in our URI stage. Remember that the URI stage is used to generate a sequence of URI's that are going to be touched or iterated through in the process stage. Also remember that we aren't actually changing anything here as this is single threaded. While the process stage, that can be multi-threaded. As you just saw, our customers are in a collection called customer. So we will use that as our criteria. You could also perform a search or leverage a static list of URIs instead if you desired. We also need to return how many URIs are in the sequence, and a quick count can give us those details. Now, the order of your return is important here. There is an optional first argument that can be used to pass the detail onto process stage, but we're not using it here. So our first item will be the count. This is followed by our sequence of URIs. So on into the process stage. Here in our process stage, each URI that was in the sequence generated by the URI stage will be passed into our process stage one at a time as an external variable. For our simple envelope, we are going to start with the initial document. Next, we will create the envelope. In this, we will put our original content into our source element. We will also copy the customer ID out of that original content and into our generic ID element. This new envelope content will be inserted into the database to replace the original document. We will also be adding the document to the transformed collection. In this video, you saw the basics of CORB the steps to implement CORB, and you saw a demonstration of using CORB. If you're looking to get MarkLogic, it can be downloaded from developer.marklogic.com. The examples from this episode are available from MarkLogic University's GitHub repository at github.com slash marklogicuniversity. You can get more training by visiting the MarkLogic dot com slash training. Also a complete selection of on-demand topics is available at mlu.marklogic.com slash on-demand. Or download the MarkLogic mobile app. This is available on both the Apple App Store and Google Play. And don't forget to show off what you've learned. Add MarkLogic as a skill on your LinkedIn profile today. Thank you for watching this MarkLogic University on-demand tutorial.